Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today, just with a minor topic, that is the electron versus hole flow. Electron versus hole flow. You know what a, well, a hole is now, right? This is the vacancy of an electron and this is represented by a circle, right? So let's say considering the same model in the previous that we discussed about the p-type material. So in which this boron impurity was added, right? And we had uh, how many electrons? Three valence electrons. So let me just show you a single atom of boron. You know, this one. And uh, wait, the next atom, uh, it was added into a silicon base, right? So it formed three covalence bonds like this. And the, and it had one, what? One hole. Here we had a hole. And over here we had an electron. In this silicon we have an electron, right? Now what do you have? If this electron is given sufficient energy, alright? This electron, if is given energy, energy, so it will move into the vacancy, alright? So it will fill up the vacancy, fill up the vacancy, which means it will go to the side of the hole, right? So which means it will move toward the right direction like this. Or this marker's color is not right. So this will move to the right, right? Okay. And now, this, this uh, covalent bond will now have a vacancy. We'll fill up the vacancy, but, but what will happen? The covalent bond will now have a vacancy. All right, so let me show it to you over here. Uh, if this was the boron atom, right? And like this. And the silicon with the blue color. Yes. So the covalent bond like this. So now what did we saw? We saw that this electron was given sufficient energy to, to, to move out of this atom and fill up the space of this, uh, what? This vacancy, you know. So that hole has now moved to the left. Which means now this, this here we have a vacancy of electron in the covalent bond which was previously a covalent bond. So what happens that the, we have both the movement of electrons and we have the movement of holes. So this movement of electron, uh, this was from left to right, from left to right, this was with the green color. We had from left to right was what? Was the movement of electron and the movement of electron this is called the natural current or this is called the electronic current all right which means that if electron is moving in this direction the current is also in this direction and similarly the from from right to left we had what from right to left we had the movement of holes, isn't it so? And this movement of holes, this is called the conventional current. And in the introduction video, I, to, I, I, I showed you the Thomas Floyd book on which it was written that this is the conventional current version. Now this conventional current means what? That in this text, all the currents that are supposed are due to the movement of holes and similarly in this book that I'm currently reading out right now this is from uh, the Robert L. Boylister 
they also consider the conventional current. So what is the conventional current? This implies that if the hole is moving in this direction, the current is in this direction. Which implies that if the electron is moving in this direction, the current is supposed to be in the opposite direction. So the conventional current is opposite to the electronic current. So let me write it over here. The conventional current is opposite to it's opposite in direction to electronic current which means it is opposite in direction to the flow of electrons in the lattice so that's all about it all right and the one that we are following that we will be following we will be following this conventional current right in all our suppositions. So that's all about this one. This was just a small video on the electron versus hole flow. See you in the next lecture with another minute topic. So till then, take care. Goodbye.